I have a new analysis and essentially a warning about the midterm election outcome. I'm recording this on Halloween. It usually takes a couple of days for this to get out, so just giving you that disclaimer. If any events have happened since Halloween, uh, they're not part of this recording. So this is Mike Adams here, and thank you for joining me on the Health Ranger Report. Here's the new warning. Um, I've, I've really been gathering a lot of information, but also checking in with intuition and where I think the uh, the emotional sort of assets of the country are are focused right now. And my sense, I mean, this is not this is not a certainty or even a, an official prediction, but it's more of a possibility that has come to light. And it, it is this, that the Democrats win the House of Representatives by a very small number of seats, like two, or maybe maybe three, and that specific elections are then challenged by the president and by the candidates, the GOP candidates who lost. So instead of conceding defeat, it goes to a challenge stage. Because control of the House now is really control over the future of America for many, many reasons involving the Trump administration, the ability of the House of Representatives to run judiciary type investigations, for example. I guess that, well, they'd be congressional investigations, but leading to judiciary decisions. The, um, the Judiciary Committee in particular has certain powers in Congress and so on. But whoever controls the House probably controls much of the, the near future of America. And of course, if the Democrats run the House, they will try to impeach the president, which would give them a strong leg up on the 2020 elections for the White House. So there's going to be a sort of an all-in battle for control over the House. And if the Democrats take the House by a very slim margin, which seems like a very strong possibility right now, then it's going to be challenged. Now that would throw, if we don't know who's going to run the House, on November 7th, that's going to throw the nation into, whoa, serious uh, chaos escalation. So if you think things are bad now, with all of the derangement and the, the threats, the, the lunatic left-wing mob and the, the shootings and the you know, fake bombings and all this stuff, if you think it's bad now, well, you wait until after the election. If we don't know who controls the House, you're going to have an eruption of protests on on the left who will claim once again they'll claim that Trump is meddling in the elections you know if the, if these are challenged and will claim that Trump is st- is trying to steal democracy when in truth the left is trying to steal democracy they've they've used the power of the tech giants like Facebook to selectively censor conservative voices which is election meddling it's election fraud in fact i've proposed that we need to delay the elections end the censorship and have at least 90 days of uncensored dialogue and debate in America before we can really have fair and free elections. Now, that's not going to happen, I understand. That's just something that I've proposed from a philosophical point of view. You can't have a democracy unless both sides are allowed to speak. That, that's, that's a very obvious premise. So the tech giants have already stole the election. And as I've s- uh, stated in a Counterthink episode, President Trump does have a legitimate reason or or grounds from which to challenge the outcome of the elections if the Democrats take the House. It is a reasonable challenge to say that these were not fair and free elections because of the selective censorship. And other reasons could be brought in, such as the left allowing illegals to vote and voter fraud. In fact, that would probably be the basis on which the election outcome is challenged. Now, this gets back to the Supreme Court and why Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation was so vehemently opposed by the left. Because election emergency decisions go to the Supreme Court, as we've seen in the past with uh, presidential elections and the hanging chads in Florida and things like that. So it means the Supreme Court will be ruling on this. Well, the Supreme Court now is a narrow, you could say a conservative margin with uh, Gorsuch in and Kavanaugh in and Clarence Thomas and others. You got about a five to four. I mean, well, exactly a five to four advantage on the conservative side. So that means there is a strong likelihood that any decision in the Supreme Court could potentially favor a GOP challenge. It doesn't mean for sure, not at all. There's there's actually not a lot of 
party loyalty at the Supreme Court. It's really more loyalty to the Constitution. So it, the decision would depend on the constitutionality, or at least the perceived constitutionality, of the Supreme Court justices, or of, uh, I should say of the challenge that's interpreted by the justices. And so it's hard to tell where this would go, but in the, in the time that it takes to render a Supreme Court decision, the country would likely erupt into chaos with leftists calling for all-out civil war and leftists saying that their democracy is being stolen, that they won the election, and they're going to bring up, oh, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, and that was stolen from them. And they're going to say that, who was their, who was their Supreme Court? Garrett? They wanted, was it Garrett that they wanted in? They're going to say that it was, that was stolen from them. I think the name is Garrett. I forgot the name. They're going to say, this is it. Democracy isn't working. They have to take over by any means necessary. This is, the, this is the way leftists are now thinking. And they're going to launch massive nationwide, essentially, revolts, uh, complete with burning down cities and bombing buildings and open warfare in the streets and so on. And from that, Trump would call in the National Guard and declare martial law, which is, I've, I've talked about this at length for the last couple of months. And I've even said most Americans in this scenario would, would beg for martial law. You will, trust me. <laughs> when, the, when chaos comes to your door, you'll beg for martial law. And then that would put Trump in a position of you know, being the executive uh, commander in chief of the military, which is already being deployed to the border, but also running the martial law operations while an election hangs in the balance. Essentially, the future of the republic hangs in the balance. So. This is now a distinct possibility. This is the civil war scenario that I've been warning about. It it is I don't know if it's 50% chance that this happens or maybe only 30. I don't know. But it is a distinct and realistic possibility that this could occur. Personally, I I do not accept this election as being fair and free. I'm already on the record saying that, and I think we need to reschedule the election. So I would support challenging this election really regardless of the outcome, because I think that Republicans are not being given an opportunity to engage in open dialogue and debate. And that's, this is not a democracy if conservative voices are selectively censored, which is what's happened. I also think we need a national voter ID law. All votes should be from U.S. citizens, period. We, we can't have illegals voting in elections, and the census needs to be recalculated to eliminate illegals. The census has given Democrats, an estimated 12 to 15 additional House seats that they don't deserve because the census hasn't removed people who are illegals. So the census should only apply to American citizens. So we need to recalibrate the census, recalibrate then the House of Representatives. We need to have national voter ID laws and we need to suspend the election until we have freedom of speech that's respected by the tech giants and then schedule fair and free elections at that point. And whatever the outcome is at that point, I will accept it. If we've got national voter ID, and just to repeat, and we end the censorship, I will accept the outcome of the elections, even if Republicans lose and Democrats take power. I will accept it. But I cannot accept the outcome if we don't have freedom of speech and we don't have fair elections. And so probably that will be the basis upon which this election outcome is challenged. And you should expect mass chaos if that's the case. I mean, all out war by the left, all out war at that point. And so, gosh, as I'm recording this, this is less than a week away. By the time you hear this, it's just a few days away. Or maybe you're listening to this after the election and everything turned out fine. I hope that's the case. I hope that on November 7th that we, we have a solid answer and we don't have questions anymore. I hope that, that, well, frankly, I hope the GOP holds the House, of course. And even then, they're still getting ripped off. They should have more seats, frankly. But, you know, if we, if we have relative peace on November 7th, then I'm, I'm happy about that because I pray for America. I pray for safety and I pray for civility. But I'm, I'm very, very much afraid that we're going to see chaos instead. So get ready, folks. Watch my videos at brighteon.com. And also, of course, read my analysis each day at naturalnews.com. Join me in praying for safety and civility. Pray for the future of America. Pray for an election outcome that does not put the Democrats in power. They cannot be trusted. They are dangerous. They are deceitful. And they despise America. 
don't let them have power. Vote the Democrats out. Thanks for listening. Learn more at healthrangerreport.com. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com. <laughs>